for you, Kim. Thank you. Welcome to Thoughts and Teens in Focus. I'm your host, Patricia Trim. Welcome you to another edition of Thoughts and Teens in Focus. Today, I have of my guest, Mr. Uh, Professor Kimani um, Nisu, Ni, Kimani Ni U C um, Professor, and also a guest, our guest, Damon Trenton. We are on to Brick Art Media. This will be recorded on Brick Art Media. And um, we'll be talking today is about libation, um, the African culture, African culture, yes, African culture, the Asian, Asian Egyptian ritual. Professor will tell us more about that. And um, he will give us the real meaning and about it and what it consists of or what it is the cause, the effects and the solution that we can able to understand our culture because some of us like me don't know and we, we never bothered to know and we never wanted to find out about anything about African culture. So please educate me, Professor. Thank you very much, Patricia. Um, thanks to our guests, um, Iman, for coming in. And hopefully, we're going to have a good discussion after. I intend to speak for about 20 minutes, and then we could spend the rest of the time, eight minutes or so, doing the discussion. What I want to do, as Patricia said, is to talk about ancient Egypt, but talk about ancient Egypt in a way that shows the links to African people wherever we are. I'm conscious that I'm addressing a mainly Guyanese audience. So lots of what I see might refer to Guyana, but we mustn't believe that this is relevant only to African people in Guyana, so-called black people. Which and reminds professor, me it's not mainly Guy uh, Guyanese people. You're talking to American people and other races okay, of well, America. That makes it better. Well, thanks for that correction. Um, makes it better. I'm far more comfortable with that so that I'll get uh, references to practicing culture all over the African world. Yeah. Let me just say that ancient Egypt is very important to all African people because it's one of the high cultures of the world. Fact is, when people talk about civilization, which means the highest achievements of people, they usually mention ancient Egypt, not only as the quintessential civilization, but as the first one. And that's one of the reasons why Europeans and Arabs, who wish us no good, want to tell us that Africa did not create the ancient Egyptian civilization. It's a false narrative. And what I'm saying here today is demonstrating otherwise. It's also telling us who we are as African people. And let me be clear again that when I say African people, I mean the people we normally refer to as the N-word derogatively, colored, another de derogative term, and even black, which is slightly better, but not the best because it doesn't represent our ancestral continent, our land, our history, and our identity. So it's important for us to throw away those things that were imposed upon us by other people who did not mean us any good, and those things that also do not work for us. So what is libation? What's the meaning? Where did it come from? Well, let me start with what most of us know. We could have listened, and if we haven't yet, we could find Tupac Shakur's song, Pour Out a Little Liquor, or Naz's song, Just a Moment. Or if you are familiar with Kaiso, you could listen to Sparrow, play one for Nello, or you could listen to Stalin, pour one for me. 
familiar the <laughs> with the saying one for the road understand or understand fully any of these songs unless we locate them in the history and culture of African people. When Tupac Shakur says pour out a little liquor, he's describing libation. Although he doesn't mention the word libation, he's describing libation because libation is pouring out small drops of liquid. Some Most times now it's liquor, but it could, you could pour libation with anything. And that's what he's talking about. The same thing with knives, just a moment, because a libation is a ritual in honor of ancestors, those who were present, those who were not present physically, but present spiritually. It's also a ritual that binds us together to do a specific purpose. I'm going to come back to that later on. But when Nas says just a moment, he's saying, be still. Let us concentrate on this. This is an important moment. When Darlin says, poor one for me, or poor one for such and such a person, saying, pour a drink for this person. When, <clears throat> excuse me, Sparrow says, play one for, he's coming out of that too. When you say, pour a drink for the road, what you're actually saying is pour a drink, a libation for the spirit that guards the road. And we'll crown this off by saying this. Both of us would have observed when elders open, or anybody for that matter, open a new bottle of liquor, they usually tip out some drops onto the floor. Sometimes you would hear people saying, for those sprinkle. who are not here, or something like that. Sprinkle it, sprinkle for them. <laughs> right. Now that is <laughs> libation. We may not before know the meaning of it, but that's libation. And libation really is a very elaborate ritual. But we don't know that because when our ancestors were kidnapped, terrorized in Africa and shipped across the Atlantic to these places, Europeans who did that crime against humanity didn't want us to practice our culture. They understood very well that if we are practicing our culture and we know our history, they can't make fools of us and get us to work for them for free. So they forbade us from practicing our culture. And our ancestors shortened the ritual of libation into just tipping out a few drops and say, for those who are not here. So those are the links with libation. And when I speak of libation, I want us to recognize that it's liquid offering to the creator, to the supreme being we know as God, but our people have known the supreme being by many different names in different places in the African world but it's the same supreme being to the lesser divinities, the spirits, the ancestors, to those physically present for the purpose we meet to do this particular libation, as well as to those who are not physically present, but who would have understood and agreed with the ritual and the purpose of the ritual. We um, pour libation too to the unborn and to the environment. So libation is a way of doing several things, but also remembering our ancestors, remembering that it is our job to protect the environment, not destroy it and pass it on 
to those who are coming after us. This is important because, you know, today we hear about environmentalism and Europeans don't generally say that it's Africans who invented that concept. And many of us are so ignorant about our own history and culture that we don't know that it is our people who give the world environmentalism. And this is part of the evidence. Would know that in the British dominated part of the Caribbean, Africans forced the British to give us what people call emancipation in August, 1838. In the United States, it was in 1865, it was different times, different years in different places. Yeah, and it was 1763. No, that was the revolution in Barbies. Wow. Now, we have sometimes been fooled into the belief that what we call emancipation was really a full emancipation or freedom. My contention is you cannot be free. You Once cannot you know. really be emancipated unless you know who you are. That's right. So many of us have remained in the worst kind of enslavement, mental enslavement. Mental but our our minds are still imprisoned by the ideologies of our oppressors. And much of this is articulated through religion, Christianity and Islam, through the newspapers, through miseducation. We go to school and we don't learn these things about ourselves. So it's important that we pause a moment and recognize that the context in which we are operating is not a nice one for us. And that it doesn't spell freedom or emancipation from all of those things we need to be free of. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean that what happened in 1838 and at other points in time didn't represent some kind of progress, but it's not the full progress we want. August 1838, 1865 in the United States and so on was the legal end of the physical aspects of enslavement. It wasn't the end of enslavement. Like I said, we're still mentally enslaved. And our freedom, our, our progress is always going to be a work in progress. It doesn't matter what we do. We have to fight to continue improving ourselves. And this is the road on which we are. Today, we, many African people, are beginning to take back our history and our culture that goes right back to ancient Egypt because ancient Egypt, like I said before, is one of the outstanding civilizations in the world. Most people say it's the outstanding one. And there's a contest for our minds. People who don't wish us well try to tell us that ancient Egypt was not an African civilization and we must not be fooled. The people who created the ancient African civilization of Egypt, ancient Egypt or Kemet, are not the current people who occupy Egypt today, the Arabs mostly. They went there long after that. So we go to what libation is. Like I said before, it's a ritual. And by original, ritual, we mean thought or action that are, all, that are all very specific and have tremendous significance. We know that African spirituality proclaims a universe, a world, if you wish, that's interrelated. We're all connected. And spirituality is the knowledge and practice of that interconnection, demonstrated through libation. I mentioned before environmentalism. And what African people know and have known before anybody else is not that not only is the world interrelated, but that if you destroy one section of the world, you destroy all eventually. And that's why when we destroy the forest, 
We threaten the entire planet, just an example that is constant. Agents. I mentioned Sparrow, Tupac, Naz, and other African people in the diaspora just now. Let me just say that in the works of creative imagination, the poems and the novels and so on, the dances of our brothers and sisters in Africa, they also proclaim, they also use libration because it's part of African culture. So if you looked at the works of Chinua Chibi, Ayekwe Arma, Elechi Amadi, Laura Nguapa, Sven Okri, and others, you're going to see libation there. So just as we have it in our culture, in the diaspora, other African people on the continent have it in our culture there also. That's where it comes from. Edward Camel Braffey, Roy Heath, Austin Clark, Brenda Flanagan, all of these people have libation. And in our attempts to understand libation, we're practicing something called Sankofa that many people would be familiar with. Here it's represented by a bird, but we also know that Sankofa is represented in the grill work that we find in many of our houses, our fences and so on, but many of us don't recognize it. Maybe that's something we could talk about on another um, program if Patricia makes a note and reminds me to talk about it. Origins of libation. Well, libation is such an, an ancient thing, but it's never been antiquated, although it's very, very ancient. It goes back thousands of thousands of years and we could find it in the south of Kemet, ancient Egypt. So it was around even before the establishment of the state of Kemet. And we find evidence of it in a place called Naphtaplaya, which is very, very ancient. Um, you also find it in the sacred literature of ancient Egypt and in the Middle Nature, which is really the excuse me, the writings of the ancient Egyptian. Well, here we have the ancient Egyptian word for purify or to present libations, and it's keb. And this is the writing of it. That's K, that's a B, that's an H. And this sign tells us that it comes from sacred offerings. The word for libation is the plural of keb, kebu. So you have the W added here, which makes it a plural. Other words in ancient Egyptian language, the so-called hieroglyphs, which our ancestors, let me remind us, called metal nature. Words in the language that are related to libation could be this word here or this word here, and they mean cool or cool through water. Again, we have another writing of keb, that's K-B, but this sign tells us that it's slightly different from the K-B or K-B-H we found above. And this term means to humble oneself before a divinity. So you see where libation is going. Yes. It's very spiritual. You, you got to humble up before a divinity when you're pouring libation. And the word keb, this is k, that's a b, this is another b. So you see um, a little difference with the same sign of the ID sign. It means be cool in ancient Egyptian. We also have a priest who specialized in pouring libation. So you know that these things happened in ancient Egypt. This is the word for the priest who specialized in pouring libation. And this is the transliteration here, I, B, and a particular kind of H. So there was specialization. Libation was so important that there was specialization. Here we have physical evidence of libation. The a priest pouring the libation and his assistant is catching the libation, the liquid in 
a particular bone, is to have libation bones. Let me just remind us that libation could be poured with any liquid. It's usual for us to pour it with rum and especially white rum in the diaspora. There are particular reasons for that. Here we have very, very ancient evidence of libation. And I think it's important for me to point out that here you find somebody, this is a woman who is making offerings, not only libation, but other offerings to a divinity. You know it's a divinity and those of us who know these addresses would know which divinity it is in ancient Egypt. But important, look at the hands. This person is saying, I come in peace. My hands are clean. My heart is clean. I mean you no harm. This is the opening of a ritual. Here we have the presentation of incense, which often went along with libation. And again, this is very, very ancient text from Kemet, ancient Egypt. And these two um, photographs are taken from artifacts that exist in the University College of London. There is a department that specializes in the study of ancient Egypt there. And that's where I obtain this. Here we have, again, um, a drawing. And this person here is presenting. This is a pharaoh, and he's presenting libation as well as incense to a divinity. You could know the name of the pharaoh by reading these here. This one says, uh, this is Kepra Ra, right? Men Kepra Ra. You put Ra in front, so that's Men Kepra Ra. So it means that established are the transformations of Ra, or the transformations of Ra are good. Um, so this is this Pharaoh who is making um, double offering. One is libation, the other one is incense. So this um, divinity. Professor, we have. Of libation from other rituals that are associated with it. So we have forest fruits. We know this, I'm going a bit quickly now. We know forest fruits as harvest in the Christian church. That's where they got the idea from. And the idea is that whenever you plant anything and you reap, the best of the forest crop or the forest reaping is offered up to the divinities and to the ancestors. Sensing is really the burning of incense in a sacred way. You offer incense. It's part of making the environment more conducive to your spiritual work. Libation is what we're discussing here. Sacrifice or blood offering is part of that whole set of uh, rituals to which libation belongs. And there is word offering. You know, in my book um, on libation, this text here, I trace the evolution, not only of all of these um, rituals, but of word offering from simple words into libation statements, which we call prayers nowadays, and even into praise singing. Now, there were other kinds of offerings we won't go into now. So, like I said, the word offering has become prayers. It has become praise and praising, praise traditions of Africa where you have praise poems, you have hymns, you have praise songs. But we mustn't fool ourselves. This is not only saying good things about the ruler. It's also criticizing the ruler. So it's praise, it's ridicule, it's blame also. And the kaisos that we sing in the Caribbean and increasingly in elsewhere, those kaisos, the word is kaiso and it's not kaliso, those kaisos articulate this and continue this tradition. 
of praise as well as blame and criticize. So in doing libation, we show respect for the occasion, for the divinities, and for those who are sharing the moment with us. And we do this in several ways. You hear some people say, you must cover your head, you kneel, you take off your shoes, and you wear white also. All of these things have symbolic meaning. Why do we pour libation? Who can pour libation? Where should libation be poured? When should libation be poured? Maybe these are questions we could bring up in the forthcoming section and we could answer them. In order to prepare for libation, we have cleansing and fortification of the mind, the body, and the immediate physical sight. So that's spiritual, mental, and physical cleansing and fortification. And those of us who know people scrub out the house to pour Florida water and so on, to, and, you know, to make the environment more conducive. This is part of that preparation, part of that tradition. Some people do it every fortnight. Some people do it every month and so on. And they don't necessarily have libation in, in, in part of it. But you know, that's, that's really a part of that tradition. So the cultural materials for, for um, libation, you have drums, you have liquid, usually alcohol, but not only it could be poured with water, honey, anything. And when people use rum, they usually use white rum. There's a reason for that also. We could talk about that. Um, people would know incense, you've born incense, like I said before, Hananga water, Florida water, and so on is used. Um, you have a circle. And there's a reason for the circle. It's the strongest shape. It has no beginning, no end. It's continuous and encompasses, encompasses all in that circle. So it an, emphasizes inclusion and not exclusion. So we could go on to the ritual itself where you form a circle, you have acclamation of purity. My hands are pure, my heart is pure. I mean you no harm. You introduce the self, the person who is doing the libation. You recite your genealogy, your whole family, where you come from. You know, usually in Africa, people know that in a way that's deeper than those of us in the diaspora know it, because our genealogies have been disrupted, or at least our knowledge of our genealogies have been disrupted. You know, so the ritual of libation begins with an invocation where people invoke the libationer, invokes the supreme being, then invokes lesser divinities, then devotes the sacred ancestors, then makes a lament for the fact of the brutality of enslavement, which has cut us off in many ways, and we're trying to rebuild those links there. Then those here, but not here. Then we do for the unborn and for the environment. We always invoke these spirits, these forces, when we do a libation. How am I for time? You got two more minutes. All right. So the ritual itself involves the pouring of libation besides the invocation that we do first. And I'll come back to invocation later on. We have the pouring. And each time you pour, you could say, Ashe which means let it be so, give it power, and people could roll the drum also. Ashe is a Yoruba word, that means power. And when you finished the libation, you have the release because you summoned all of these spirits. You have to let them go. The person who or persons who are doing the libation are in a circle, a powerful circle of spirits. You gotta get that person back, so you have to do the release, the person has to return to normal space from out of that spiritual space. And very often, the liquid that's poured in libation is poured into a receptacle. And that liquid becomes a communal cup that everybody sips from. You go to European churches today and they tell you about communion. And most of us don't know that that's part of our own cultural heritage that's being paraded in front of us. 
as somebody else's cultural heritage. At the end, we used to sing in London redemption song because it's such a powerful anthem to ourselves and to what has happened to us and what we need to do. So that would be my presentation, initial presentation on libation. When we come back we, next week, we could talk about the reasons for libation, who could pour it, of where it should be poured and so on. And we could do some of the significances of um, the, the ritual. Okay, we and, don't cut off any time now. And the benefits of the ritual. So let's, let's stop now and come back. Let it go.